you doing? Yeah. What's up? What do you want to talk about? Uh, oh, jeez, I don't know. Uh, how how do you feel about the word uncle Tom now? Words, two words. I don't know. It's a really um, I don't know. I guess like if the if that side wants to say that um, like it's literally she her argument was that it's literally the same as calling somebody the n word. Then I guess I don't I know. I disagree with that. Well, yeah, but I mean, it doesn't matter if a black person is telling me that I'm calling them the n word. I don't really, I can't really say much. So I don't know. It seems like a position that I should just abdicate immediately. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard that one before uh, in uh, your leftist circles. Oh, I didn't have a chance to catch up on uh, what you two like, talked about. Uh, the only thing that I got was this. This clip right here, I was told it adequately represents the conversation. Okay. That's only seven. Oh, hold Check on. Oh, somebody just clipped out a fucking meme or whatever. Um, one of the big problems that I had with her is that, um, and I kind of, and I totally understand her point of view, is that she is of the mindset that so this actually explains, even though I thought I thought parts of her argument were kind of irrational, but um, for, she was well-spoken and, and did a lot better than most people in these conversations. So, I mean, I give her big props for that. But um, I think the, the, very, the very root stem of our problems, um, and it might even explain the differences in the Uncle Tom shit or whatever, but like the big root difference in our problems is she was of the mindset that she should be able to say whatever she wants, and if everybody misinterprets her message, that's their fault. Um, that it's not her responsibility to make sure that people understand what she says or whatever. Um, and that if they have, if they don't know exactly what she's thinking, that it's that person's obligation to contact her and figure out what she's thinking rather than to make assumptions. Uh, mm. So, so uh, and I, this is something that I used to believe maybe four or five years ago, but my sh thinking on this has shifted rather dramatically to if you're a public figure and you say things, it's your responsibility to understand how your message is interpreted because whether you like it or not, there are people that can kind of use your message and, 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 and use it in ways that you don't want them to or in ways that you don't necessarily agree with, and you, you're somewhat responsible for how people do that. Um, so I think that the big difference there between our two thoughts kind of like explained most of our differences in thought. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah, I do think that public figures have a responsibility to express their opinions as clearly as possible because it's unreasonable for them to expect every single one of their viewers or fans or audience members to go and go, oh, what did you mean? Yeah, so exactly? that seems like an obvious argument, but she wouldn't even concede that to me she was saying that like yeah you should send emails to everybody because i was saying like okay well like it's not like sargon is going to answer a million emails and she's like well he might like that so that was kind of but yeah she but we know she's a piece of shit from the start so there's well no well wow, damn about. i don't want to savage her i don't want to like full right. so like on her twitter she's a capitalist <laughs> okay she didn't even censor it there weren't even asterisks yeah she's a capitalist slash libertarian so she's about as far from your point of view as possible so the thing that bothered me was that um um so it seems like so she gave a criticism of BLM that I disagreed with pretty solidly I like pretty solidly disagree with what she says but it was one of the best kind of like I'm not a big fan of BLM for these reasons that I've heard so far from somebody. It was a decent one, right? But yeah. if you go to her channel and you go through her content, all she's ever doing is criticizing BLM and talking about how much she hates it. Even though she, when I talk to her, she says that she believes that you know BLM does do a, a quite a bit of good and their overall message is okay. She just has a problem with I guess the leadership or or the organization or something like that, right? But so yeah. like I would ask her like, okay, well, but if I go through your channel and watch all of your videos, I would come away with this impression that you just think BLM BLM is horrible and I could cite you as a black person that says BLM is horrible and that's really cool for me and then she would kind of like well if you thought that that was wrong and you should send me an email to clarify my position was essentially her argument so I was like okay yeah look there are a lot of problems with BLM on an organizational and goal oriented level but I do think it, you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of when you and I used to argue and you used to say you were a hard hitting gender egalitarian who fought equally against the forces of Feminazi SJW isms and MRA meninisms, and all you posted on your blog was like why there are enough women in gaming represented, and we don't need it anymore. It reminds me of that. I don't know if it's I posted really exactly that. Say... Damn, that's a pretty extreme uh, interpretation, but <laughs> sure. But we'll say for sake of argument, yeah, sure. No, uh, I. But no, I. I do think, and and that's why you called her talk. Like that was the initial impression you got from her, and that's why. You discredited her argument from the start because you felt like she was using her position as a minority to disenfranchise her comrades. 
Right. Yeah. So, but like, yeah. So that's kind of an interesting like line to walk on, though, because to some extent, like, part of understanding minority identity is not making a minority out to be like a representative of their minority either, right? Like, you you shouldn't yeah. you shouldn't go to an Asian or a black person or whatever and be like, hey, so you said this and you represent all Asian people, right? So I, you could make the argument that calling somebody like a race traitor is implying that they need to have a certain set of beliefs because they are a race and that to not have that doesn't fit some sort of identity or make them accurately represented or something i'm not sure so i'm kind of torn between like understanding that that's like a good that's a good statement i don't know if she made that point but that's something that i kind of uh, i've thought about recently like that's that's a decent statement but then it's also hard to ignore like i can understand from the um from the ideological point of view that maybe you should never say that about anybody that they're like a traitor to whatever but then like from the pragmatic point of view like how do you tackle with things like Blair White and Milo Minneapolis? Like how do it's, you? Like, it's I don't fucking. Know. I feel like I have a lot of skin in this game personally because as somebody who's on fairly frequently, also somebody. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Your mic, your mic keeps cutting off in and out. I don't know if you're on low voice threshold or you're not using push and talk, but your voice keeps cutting in, in, in like that. Okay, you know what? Okay, I'm just gonna talk louder. Okay, you have a lot of skin in the game, and then. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh no, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Real, 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 real quick. Because the meme okay. came a million ways, fucking full circle. So part of originally why we're, we were on here is because she thought that I was being racist. Okay. So a long time ago, um, I got into a fight with a bunch of people on Twitter that were black supremacists. Right. L literally black right. supremacists. They thought that white people were disgusting fucks. And okay. So I got into a fight with a lot of them, and the tweets get pretty fucking memey because that's what I do on Twitter. And so. Um, can somebody link me the lit tweet? Basically, some chick tweeted me like, "Well, fuck off, bitch!" Like being black is being black is lit, and I, and so I tweeted back. I was like, "Lit, you say?" And I tweeted like a burning KKK cross, <laughs> right. kind of dumb, kind of edgy, but like yeah, it, her, her yeah. statement was kind of stupid. Like, I, like I don't like I don't know. It just seemed kind of dumb in the context of everything. So whatever. <laughs> um, so this lady um, now, so the girl, the woman that I talked to today. Um, was quoting that tweet at me like, look, you really are racist. You send burning crosses to black people. Well, that girl that I originally tweeted that black cross at, she tweeted today about the debate that I had with this girl, and she called her an Uncle Tom as black girl. <laughs> <laughs> the meme came full circle. Oh. See, that's... that's it, it paid off in the end. You nah, put evidence down a long None of this paid ago, off, dude. This and then is... it came right back at her. That's this... good. Oh, good. my God. What is... I'm sorry. So, anyway, you were saying you had a lot of skin in this game, and then I just tangented horribly. So, okay, go ahead. No, it was good. I'm glad I know about that now. Sure. Um, yeah, no. I, I, I have skin in this game because I participate online and in academia, like local university, and there are a lot of people who are both simultaneously minorities who have shitty opinions on their own minority. Like, it just happens a lot, because... Huh? Super Taco? Oh, the fucking Super... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I'll t maybe I'll bring that up. The It happens a lot. Idiocy is pretty racially neutral. You know, being wrong, pretty racially neutral. Mm -hmm. You're going to get people who use... Even if they don't admit to it, they're going to express viewpoints pertaining to something that only they have had experience about in a way that is probably just not right and i really really think that it's difficult to call them out in it because on one hand you can't say hey as a minority group you're supposed to have a monolithic opinion block and if you don't agree with me then you're just selling out your kind but you also can't let them get away with it because there are people like blair white and my Giannopoulos who are just very very clearly profiting from being the turncoat yeah. of the conservative it kind of reminds me, like when you see, like the, like I, honestly, like there's there there are so many different names for similar things. Like pe people will say shit, like um, like I, I honestly think that like the Uncle Tom thing is the same kind of idea as like internalized misogyny, and like calling somebody out on that is really hard too, right? Because you're essentially saying like, well, you have the wrong opinions as a woman. Like, how do you use that as a term or recognize that as in its in existence without also being like dismissive of everything the person says? Like, I think, I think. I think we have to accept that some arguments are fundamentally going to... You're keep cutting dismiss. out again. Fuck! You, we're going to have to accept that some arguments are fundamentally... Yeah, so, some arguments 
fundamentally can only be used to invalidate the opinions of another person. And that doesn't always mean they're illegitimate. It just means they're really dangerous to use because you can be called out on it if it doesn't go well. Um, because what, what you said, okay, like, let's say you didn't call that woman on Twitter. Let's say you called her like a mascot or like a turncoat or Ooh, something else. I feel like I would have gotten just as much flack though. Well, maybe, because the sentiment expressed is the same, but it doesn't maybe, have the racially charged yeah. context that you maybe, get with the term. Maybe problem. you just ignore it altogether, and I guess maybe only try to address the arguments and ignore the the tokenism, Maybe, I but I fucking hate people like that. I mean, we all hate Mayo Yiannopoulos more than yeah. other people who believe, because we, we fucking hate that, because they coast by on being like the their guy, the don't worry I'm not like those other people. They're exactly like those chicks in high school who say they're not like other girls to get in with the guys. Yeah. It's the exact same immature, self-serving sentiment. And I fucking hate it. And you should hate it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with calling it out. I just don't know if mom is the right... Yeah, I guess it's just you have to be... I think that you have to be... It's You have to be so careful when you, when you like... When you, when you try not to... Because like, you're skirting, like, a really dangerous line, right? Like, let's say that you get somebody who is, they grow up in a certain, let's say you take a black person, okay? Let's say they grow up in a wealthy household in some part of America. They're not really exposed to any racist memes. And then they grow up and they, they get these opinions about the world. And maybe they don't believe that racism exists in any form in America and everything is fair, blah, 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 blah. And then they get out and they start speaking about these opinions. And then you essentially show up and you say, hey, well, you're kind of being an Uncle Tom right now or whatever, right? Like how, isn't that kind of just dismissing their ideas because of their race? Yeah, I feel like the only way you can say it is say something like, hey, I understand that your lived experiences may contrast with mine, and I'm not trying to suggest that all people of a minority group should think together, but I feel as though the opinions you're expressing here are expressively contrary to the interests of your group, and you're profiting off that by appealing to like the hegemonic majority. I, I feel like that's the old, like, like that's Listen, the man, most... that's a lot of nuance for a fucking 140 character tweet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no. That's that's all you can get. It's a really shitty thing to have to say because even then, even with that level of nuance, they can still call you out and start a fucking Twitter race war. Um, didn't all this start because? Didn't all this start because you got in an argument over PewDiePie shit on Twitter, and then it came out that you like spent three months back in january of 2013 typing nothing but the n-word okay i never um, did this i don't know why people think i did this I've, I've never done this it's like the same two screenshots show up from like 2013 like over and over again and somehow that meant i was constantly calling people n-words like i but yeah i don't know it's just dumb it's just dumb fucking memes the funny thing is that like i never even called out pewdiepie i never even said anything harsh about i never said anything on twitter about it i actually just went in on notch because notch was being a fucking idiot but yeah notch is a piece of shit well more than and that Minecraft notch is probably fucking crazy like holy shit like he's a full-on like pizza gator you know that like seth rich was can, murdered yeah, yeah, by he hillary clinton like holy fuck I mean, what do you do with your life after you have two million dollars of Eminem sitting in your mansion parlor? You know, what, where do you go past that point? Do you think being an alt right? I wonder if Notch is like. I bet Notch is richer than Trump. Do you think? I, I actually how would ironic not even is be that? His net he worth is president. listed at one point four billion, and I bet he's got less bullshit financial stuff surrounding him than Trump does. <laughs> Holy shit! Do you ever do you ever like look at Minecraft's profit margins? little bit that could like i think everyone does right i think oh and and it, that's what your mic keeps doing god fucking damn it it's not like i'm doing anything different just use push to talk or turn your threshold down no it's not is is it i don't think it's threshold i think it's my connection but yeah hold on no it's not your, it's not your connection i would be able to tell trust me i can hear the uh packets dropping yeah if, okay. if it starts to yeah, drop okay. it i'll go and okay, tell okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do like weird shit bam Input sensitivity at negative 100 decibels. Oh, there you go, dude. Can you hear me now? Is it good? Good, yeah. Okay, am I speaking at equal to or above negative 100 decibels? Let yeah. me know if I drop low. Sounds good. Mate. Okay. But, um... Okay, yeah. So, ignoring all the context that brought you to that point, mm -hmm. I don't 
really think there's anything fundamentally wrong with criticizing that kind of behavior from people in minority groups, but you have to be so fucking careful. I think of how careful I have to be. Can I share an anecdote with you? Sure. Okay, it's the Taco Tuesday. My girlfriend said it. Okay, I didn't say Taco Tuesday. There's a thing uh, at our university. Somebody made an art piece that was sponsored by the university, and they hung it up in the main eating hall. And it was like this really nice, um, like Baroque oil painting in black and white of these- no, uh, color. Line, was it color? Yeah. Okay, shut up. Just I'm tell her you don't see color, okay? Go ahead. Yeah, I don't see color. Um, <laughs> shit, don't, get me in trouble. Um, the uh, uh, It was a really nice painting and it was hung up in the cafeteria. And it was of these line workers, like cooks, and they were uh, all Latino. And it was a pretty, in my opinion, a flattering and accurate depiction of the sort of wage slave day-to-day -day struggles. Um, kind of like those oil paintings that were done towards the end of the 19th century that showed like farmers tilling the fields and you were meant to sympathize with them. They were usually cloaked in hard shadows. I don't know how much you know about art history. Okay, sure. I, I think I know what you're talking about, like paintings of slaves working in the field and you see their toils and troubles and you, yeah, you're supposed to empathize with it, right? Yeah, yeah, and sure. they're meant to be sympathetic because before that point, paintings were mostly done of aristocrats, so it was a significant paradigm shift. Anyway, okay. that painting got taken down because people, these thin-skinned liberal dipshits, thought that this sympathetic painting that accurately and heartfully expressed the difficulties of perhaps the minority experience in this country, maybe wage slavery, whatever you go with, was racist because it showed Latino dudes cooking in like a kitchen. So haha, -ha, Latino dudes cooking in a kit, got him. So they had it taken down and got replaced with some shitty fucking mural of like a black woman meditating and there's a third eye in her forehead and it's like the forest and the, the hippy dippy shit. I hate it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I argued with like 20 people over that. You can't just, you just can't convince some people. Some people are just gonna have. You ever see the, um... You ever see, I like, I like, I always think it's funny when liberals like trip over themselves and like the oppression Olympics sometimes. You ever see on The View yeah. when that one lady is uh, going hard in on Trump and she like has a little gaff? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? No. no. Oh man, yeah, there's this huge clip. Um, you can probably search for like The View Trump Latino or whatever. This woman's like, I think that Trump needs to be way more kind to Latinos and Hispanics. And he needs to be careful about talking about kicking all of these people out of the country. Uh, Cause if he were to kick out every single Latino, who would there be to clean his toilets? <laughs> and like, after she said it, everybody was like, whoa, what do you mean? She's like, whoa, I didn't mean it like that though. You know, <laughs> actually, hold on. I can't believe you haven't seen this. I gotta find this. It's, I, I can't even do it justice. Um, I had the same thing happen in my eighth grade history class too. They were talking, but she was like, racism is dumb, guys. Let's face it. If there weren't black people in this country, who would drive our buses? Yeah. And everyone in the class fucking. Okay, here you go. Hold on. Go, bring this shit up. Right. Let me know when you're ready to start. It's 40 seconds. This is really funny, dude. It's, it's Did you ever the... look at the, the thing I linked to you, by the way, that seven second clip? I thought it was pretty zesty. Probably. What was it? Remind me. What? No, it was it was an accurate summary of the conversation that you had. Oh, before. no, somebody already posted it in Shadow Larry, so I've seen it. It's on my okay, It's pretty good. All okay, right, let me ready? watch this. Three, two, one, go. Latinos here in this country that Hell do yeah. agree that the immigration problem is a problem, and it does need to be addressed, and it does need to be fixed. Interesting. But making uh, those comments, those racist comments, do not help. And, it does, and if, yeah. you, if you kick every latino out of this country then who is going to be cleaning your toilet donald trump oh that's not in a sense oh, that's... you know what i mean like, but i'm saying there's more there's more jobs to be in la they always <laughs> said it, but they don't are not only the no, only people I mean, mean it like that, that. oh Come on. man no i would never that's mean it like so that okay that i'm not part of this argument you have I to feel like trump himself <laughs> for her a little because you know that's not what she meant but wow yeah but i yeah no but it's like yeah, one of those yeah, things yeah, where yeah. it's like kind of sort of true but then it also sounds really bad, and it just kind of yeah, sort of, you know, like. It depends on the way you phrase it. If you phrase it like a liberal, it comes out like that. Who's going to shine my shoes? If you yeah. phrase it like a leftist, 
you say the hardworking, noble proletariat of this country are made up of people of every race and ethnicity, Donald Trump. Sure. See, leftism is the solution to racism. Steve. You hate black people so much, and you think that they're not worthy of being paid you know, just compensation. Well, who do you watch on the TV every Sunday night when you watch your football games? <laughs> it's not like the best fucking thing. Oh, shit, dude. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are ways in which that argument can be. Yeah. I think maybe a slight adjustment. So have you learned from all of this? You've learned, don't say the N-word anymore, right, Stephen? Yeah, I mean, I, re- <laughs> I just, I really don't. Like, I think I said, I said it like once or twice in chat. I was be- it was like a really edgy day. And then it was like, um, yeah, like two or three times, like over the past, like, it was like seven years. But it's like, damn, dude, every single time is like immortalized in some screenshot. I don't know. I yeah, think dude, it's being a public figure. Well, kind of, but it's also very annoying slash frustrating because, like, I could kind of buy it when, like, SRS would do it to me, like, because that's their shtick. But, like, when the people that are doing this to me are literally arguing, like, okay, well, when Trump says that stop and frisk is okay and all Mexicans are rapists and Mexican judges can't rule on his things and we need to ban all Muslims, he's not racist for five-dimensional chest reasons. Or, like, when this guy is being racist all the time or supports race policy, he's not being racist for five-dimensional chest. Or, like, white people should be able to call black people the N-word anytime they want and it shouldn't be racist. Words, you know, context, 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 context. Like, these are the arguments that these people make all the time, right? Some of the arguments I used to make. And then these are the people who are like by the way did you see destiny that said that word one time in chat look at this screenshot he's racist by the way like really dude yeah no like that's, that's how that's what they do because <laughs> right? they don't believe anything you remember that that sort but they don't actually give a shit about what they believe they just want to discredit your arguments and this, it's it's such a it's such a common tactic and it's so effective because mo- so many people who consider themselves left-leaning are thin-skinned bitches and they will, they, you know, like the call out culture, that's a big thing. SRS does it. Uh, Tumblr is a big fan of it, you know? Yeah. Well, it's fundamentally toxic because it means that you can invalidate somebody's opinion for something they've said or done, regardless of what you're bringing to the argument. And it happens really frequently. Wait, I can do a call out, right? So squid Uh-oh. in your discord, Uh-oh. squid with a, with a one instead of an I, Uh-oh, thinks yeah? that black people are subhuman animals. But I admitted to him that I have said the N-word a minimum of one time over the past four years out loud. And that, to him, evens it out. And I tell him, no, Squid, you can't say the N-word. And he says, yes, I can. And by the way, black people are worse than me. And it just gets me, you know? Are we slandering someone right now? Did this actually happen? All right, now I'm done. Also, I was told by politics to uh, bring up the minimum wage to you. What about it? Where, where do you think it should be at, Stephen? I don't know. I don't. I probably don't think it should exist. We're gonna disagree on almost everything economically. I'm a yeah. big market memer, my dude. I love markets. Yeah, we never bring it to the economic stuff. See, you talk the talk, Stephen, but are you willing to walk the walk? I love markets, dude. <sighs> They're so ah, oh, the oh, so many invisible hands everywhere. It's like I'm watching Elf in the Lead. Oh, Elf in, Oh my fucking god! You know Elf in the Lead is the worst anime. Right? It's like the single worst but, anime. But all those, yeah, in, a, but all the guiding a, invisible hands, dude. The hands of the market. analogy, <laughs> because like Elf in Lead, capitalism pisses itself on the floor. Um, seriously though, look, I'm not an economics major, but if we talk sometimes, I think that you would find that there's a lot more juicy market goodness in socialist societies, hypothetically, than you think there are. Whew. Also, you can't be you can't be economically conservative with socialism. It's not possible, Steve. Well, I mean, I don't know. I try to I try to do that. But Oh, that was but... another funny oh, but I but I'm I yeah I am. I think I, I consider myself socially liberal but economically conservative, I guess. Maybe. I guess right. it would depend on what we're talking about. I don't know. You, uh, you're you sounding a little bit unsure of yourself. Was there something else you just noted? No, that's it. I'm pretty sure of myself. <laughs> no, you're just the way... You, no, you actually sound vocally. 
oh. the vibrations. No, I'm just a little bit tired, but that no, I'm man, I, yeah, I'm pretty socially liberal, I would think, but I'm pretty economically conservative. But I guess depending on the issue, you might call me economically liberal. I guess it just depends on the particular issue. I'm, yeah, I'm a well, radical what if, alt centrist. What? What if the what if what if the way markets orient themselves fundamentally deprive resources to minority groups and others who need them? Wouldn't you say then that the practical necessities of being conservative in an economic sense make one conservative in a social sense because you are then depriving them of the resources they need through economic policy rather than through like social bigotry yeah 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 it's a valid argument but i don't know if it's a sound one i don't know if i agree with your premise that capitalism inherently distributes resources away from minorities in oppressive ways i mean I oversimplified it, but I think there are some cases in which the market uh, forces, uh, when left unchecked, will strip resources away from vulnerable groups. Can you give me like what? What like what? Like how? Um, I, I don't know. I think that capitalism relies on the existence of a perpetual underclass. So it's. It, I mean, we do need people mopping the floors, working the till. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there is more money to be found in. Um, building industries that profit from the decay of like black inner city communities than it would be to go in and fix those communities by actually offering them a diverse range of financial opportunities yeah so i guess like for my me i'm like i don't really care if there's always an underclass i guess as long as the underclass is doing well right but it, it isn't though well well that's debatable compared to what Okay, yeah, but if you want to drop the bar that low, Stephen, I mean, yeah, none of us are serfs, but yeah, yeah we so all I, have Well, I mean, like right now, the underclass, the depending on where you're at, like being poor still confers a, a great deal of things to you in the United States. You probably have access to the internet. You probably have access to a cell phone. You probably have access to television. Uh, I mean, it can definitely be better. Don't get me wrong. Uh, there's a lot of fucking problems that need to be fixed. I just don't necessarily know if, like, let's say that we got to a point where we had that underclass, but we also had, um, whether it was through universal basic income or we had um, just the way that the market oriented itself, products were cheap enough and people were making enough money that, that even if you were an underclass bus driver or, you know, street sweeper or floor mop or whatever, you still had, you know, all the bare necessities covered and some extra money for some luxury shit. I, I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing in the world. I think that's okay. I mean, is that where we want to draw the line? Even if I accept your premise that there would ever be a point at which the living standards of the quote-unquote underclass are by any means acceptable, is that really a society we want where we skate by economic inequality because at least the worst off are still doing decently? I mean, I guess... I don't. I just. I guess I'm not sure if it's possible to make every single person in society a middle-class person. I don't know if that can... Have you heard the good word of communism, my friend? <laughs> I've heard I've I've read books about it, but I haven't seen any good implementations of it yet. Yeah, no. I mean, it's pretty hard. You know, it, they say communism works in theory, but in practice, you always get thwarted by a CIA coup. Well, I mean, that might be possible too, but um, I mean, part of my bias is that I have a decent understanding of market forces. Yeah. Um, Has so anyone like, ever sold you on market socialism? Um, no. Can you give me like a brief rundown? Oh God! I mean, it's not my it's not my field. But fundamentally, you know that social, like in the broadest terms, um, capitalism is private ownership of the means of production. Socialism then would be public ownership of the means of the production. Those characteristics don't necessarily preclude the existence of markets. It's still possible for there to be public demand met by, oh, I don't know if they would be called businesses, but groups leveraging their capital, or maybe not, no, not their capital, really, their market power, their um, material producing power. There's a term for it. I'm tired. Um, leveraging their ability to meet those market needs. So you would still have grocery stores with 16 different types of blue cheese and t-shirt shops where you can get 84 different band uh, like logos, like the, all of the wastefulness and uh, irreducible necessity of capitalism, but in a socialist society. Okay, so here's here's just a random meme question, okay? So let's say 
that there were three types of cereal in the store, in our comrade store, okay? Com comrade groceries. Let's say we've got three different types of cereal, and some guy on the street has this theory, and he's like, dude, I want to make a uh, new cereal called um, like Coco Comrade Pebbles, and it's going to be the best cereal ever. How does he go about doing that? Like under a capitalist society, I can understand most steps of the way towards founding that business, but how would he ever do this in a socialist society? Where does he get the capital to start a business? How does he like open a factory? Like how does he take that initial risk? Like where do, how does that happen? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, and it's definitely a subject of contention amongst leftist academics as well. I mean, you know, it's not it's not like we have all this shit figured out. But I, before I start, I think it's important to know that there are many barriers to entry in a capitalist society as well. It's not as though anyone can go making their own cereal brand. There are significant barriers to entry. So when I note that there are also barriers to entry in a market socialist society, I don't want that to be seen as a unique feature of business implementation in such a society. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, um, sure. If I had to guess, and it really is just a guess, but uh, my understanding would be that in such a society, there are co-ops and communes and councils of um, workers and managers who coordinate the material interests of people who are under their jurisdiction. And if you have an interest in providing a new cereal, and since this grocery store has three cereals, I would imagine that they would, then you could probably bring this to a workers' council or maybe whatever you want, whatever fancy leftist term you want to provide to an organization that manages the distribution of resources and say, hey, I've got this nice cereal idea. Uh, I can R&D this. Get, just give me access. Just give me a couple days, couple couple thousand dollars, or Marxist dineros, as we would call them, and um, I can whip something up. And if you have a good, it'd be like uh, what do they call it? Pen and Teller? Do that? No, not Pen and Teller. Uh, the Shark Tank? What's that fucking thing? Yeah, sure. You... Shark Tank, or um, there's another name for the American version or Canadian version of some shit, but sure. Yeah, I think it would be a little bit like that. If you have a good idea, you need to bring it to the people who manage the barriers to entry for the production of new resources. Sure, but I how know do I'm, these I'm probably people, triggering like AD. How do these people get in their positions? Are these like elected people? Yeah, yeah. It would all be through like a democratic bureaucracy, uh, like a hierarchy um, mandated by the interests of those who work the factories, who till the fields, or since realistically we're talking about automation from the people who tweet out like their support from the couches of their homes. You know what I mean? I, wait, I'm, I'm rambling that a little bit. Wait, so they so they're elected? Is that was that? I'm sorry. Yes, the people oh, who yeah, head okay. these workers' councils would absolutely be elected representatives of the people over whom they have jurisdiction. Gotcha. Well, like if I had to attack our current political system, my biggest probably problem is probably the democratic part. And now you're making the economy rely on it too. Oof, that's like another point against you. <laughs> well, what's wrong? What's wrong with the democracy in this? Country? People are fucking stupid. That's right. Capitalism. You remove the capitalism. Democracy you still have, works. like, your prote protections and shit under a socialist government for, like, mob rule and whatnot? I mean, what if you had a guy that wanted? What society. if you had the guy that wanted to start the Colored Comrade Cocoa Krispies, the CCCC? He wanted to start that cereal factory, but it was all white people voting, and all they voted in were five white councilmen who made these decisions and because he's not in a capitalist society where a black man can get a loan to take on the individual risk to start a business, succeed or fail, um, now he has to petition the government, who is elected by racist people, who won't give the colored comrade Coco Krispies a starting chance. Now what does he do? Okay, well, I'd like to first off address the misconception that a capitalist society would give a black man the means to uh, meaningfully combat this. There are plenty of microcosmic societies, uh, towns, villages, cities, even entire states and counties that had almost no black representation. And even if they did have the capital to start things up, they would have been burnt out. Mm -hmm. You know, their businesses burned, their houses robbed, them physically threatened with violence. But in a socialist society, and I'm not saying that couldn't happen, by the way, I mean, I'd love to say that whatever changes bring about a socialist society would also fix people's brains and make them stop judging people based off the color of their skin. But realistically, it could happen, sure. as unlikely it is. It could also happen in our capitalist society, and does, to, in, to a large extent, depending on your associate. It is a problem. 
Um, I think hopefully under a circumstance like that, there would be whatever that workers commune answers to, because there is always a higher tier in the bureaucracy. Uh, hopefully there would be some sort of jurisprudence or maybe a, a like a, an ethics and fairness board that would make sure that these committees are operating in the best interest of their constituencies in accordance with a larger doctrine of human rights. You know, don't discriminate based on color, sex, gender, race, ethnicity, language, sexuality, penis length. But it's, it's tough. There's a reason why these things are difficult to implement. It's because a, a socialist societies are right now a brainchild of a collection of academics they they're 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 very well formulated on paper but the implementation is difficult but capitalist societies were only described in academia after they started to emerge from mercantilist societies socialism wants to be created by design capitalism emerged through existing socioeconomic conditions and i think that makes it a lot harder to practically implement these policies you know yeah, I think, well, I think another big problem, too, is you say, and not to, I'm sure you you understand this nuance, that even though socialism might exist perfectly on paper, the implementation is always going to be very difficult. Like, right now we have capitalism, and even that isn't completely understood, right? Like, we still, um, like, we still don't understand, like, basic things about our current economy just because everything is so insanely complicated. Like, is a minimum wage good or bad? Like, that's still, like, a very fucking hotly contested question that a lot of people don't even seem to understand. It's a toughie. Did you just go silent? What happened? Oh, yeah, no, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I'm sorry? Uh, did you cut out? I thought you were in the middle of an argument. Wait, what did I... Talking. I don't know. Wait, what did I just say? I said I was just... I was done talking. You... Oh, <laughs> sorry. okay. Sorry, okay, sorry. you I'm must kind have of cut tired. out for a second. Oh, then... <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. These... It, these concepts are difficult to implement, but fundamentally, is your problem with socialism an ideological one, or do you just think it impractical? Um, well, my problem with socialism is that there are... My problem with socialism is that markets have very good things about them that I like. Um, I don't know if you'd call it economic um, dwarfism. <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Dar Darwinism. Uh economic darwinism that survival of the fittest the incentivizing certain types of behaviors to create optimal products that's um that societies choose over other products like those kinds of things that come from free markets i really 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 like those things i like those incentives but it, i mean it doesn't really like happen it, like well most... it, it does happen you can't say that most... no, maybe you could say it doesn't happen in the ways you'd want it to or as well as you want it to but it does happen yeah, but most major R and D is done by like government and military research, and most like market um, driven product design. Like, let's take Apple for an Apple is the worst example. We can take anything for an example. Wait, what's uh, wrong with take? Let's take Apple. Why is, why is Apple the worst example? Oh, oh, Apple's the worst example just because they're so blatant in all the terrible things they do to their consumers. The planned obsolescence, the constant re-release with minor differences to their product line, the fact that they force updates that deliberately slow down older iterations of their product line, the fact that all the technology has basically been the same for a pretty long time now. All government research, mind you. Um, all government but research? Just, mm. No, well, no, not all, but a significant portion of what we enjoy in our day to day from the internet, television, uh, cellular phones, these major R and D breakthroughs are made by the government because the government's the only institution that can spend a yeah, billion dollars. Yeah, to some extent, to sure. But the government isn't going to package that up into a nice little MP3 player that I can take with me in my car, right? You need a company to take that research and bundle it in such a way that it becomes, um, uh, enjoyable to the consumer, right? Yeah, and I think that those kinds of committees, those design processes, could be carried over just as well in a socialist society. So Once that's my problem is, the major... So okay. my thing is that I'm not sure if that's true. That's what I don't believe in. Maybe you believe in it. So this is this is how I view it, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, is that you believe that this would happen because you believe in some internal and in, intrinsic goodness in people where they would want to bring that product out. I don't necessarily believe that. I think that... 
things like profit and success drive people. And in what capitalism does, this is our invisible hand meme, is that what capitalism does is it drives those greedy urges into creating something that benefits society. That if that profit didn't exist at the end of that tunnel or some measure of success didn't exist at the end of that tunnel, that you might not get those products because people wouldn't care as much. That I mean, this, is, this could just be a shift in perspective. But when I think of what these products are owed upon, I think of the hard work and research of government scientists, of uh, dedicated workers. When I think of greed and profit motive, I think of planned obsolescence. I think of updates that deliberately um, make obsolete older models so people have to buy new ones. I feel yeah, like, but the I mean, like the product that is so good great that aren't driven by the greed. product. The things that make those products so good, like outweigh those things. Like people might say that like, oh, planned obsolescence is so bad, blah, blah, blah. But the new iPhone and shit, people love that shit so much that they buy it anyway. It's obviously not yeah, bothering but, them too and much. And we're just you know? only talking about like first world externalities. What if you, what are, is it worth the, the factories in China where they establish like anti-suicide nets? They put them outside the window. Like how, is it worth like the, the slaves in, in Africa who mine up like the, the silicon? Like what? How so, far back I mean, like, do I don't know, go? like, well, like, those, uh, those are externalities that are hard to uh, address, like, I mean, and it's a shitty thing, but it's like, the, the, I mean, working in a factory in China is shit, but it's better than subsistence farming, and I mean, China's economy is fucking exploding, 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 like, where is China gonna be in 20 years, like, their middle class is gonna be bigger than ours is, like, the median wages in that country have fucking exploded, China has become an economic powerhouse, their GDP is gonna overtake ours in, in what, within a decade? Like, you can hardly argue that, like, 20, 30, 40 years from now, people aren't going to be like, poor China. Like, look at all those poor workers. Like, China will be, like, the economic leader of the world, you know? Yeah, but right now we're the economic leader of the world, and I still look at our humbled proletariat and think those poor workers, you know? Like, what are they building up to? This? Well, but I guess, like, the problem is always, like, what's the alternative? A land where everybody is, like, rich just doesn't seem possible. No, but I think a redistribution of existing resources and methods is all we need. All of the it's like it's like the world the the food uh, shortage problem. There are places where people are starving, and there are places where people throw out food. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, idealistically, resources could be redistributed, and nobody would need to starve. Everyone could eat happily forever. But um, I feel like it wouldn't take such a idealistic leap in logic to implement that on an economic scale massive amounts of money and resources are wasted in places where they would be much better put towards like basic subsistence living for the people who don't have access to that sort of stuff you know mm -hmm. like every time you go down a toy store and you see all that crap that plastic just that shit you know toy stores are full of shit and you look down the aisles and you look on the shelves and you see all that crap all of that is r d development uh, factory work time and material resources that could have been put towards stuff that actually matters and gone towards people who need it. And the only thing keeping that shit there is the profit motive, you know? Like, I don't, not everyone needs to be rich. We just need to redistribute existing resources. We're not creating I mean, like, yeah, anything. I kind of, I, I understand your memes in theory, but what I'm worried about or the thing that worries me is that like this dichotomy right now is a bit and not intentionally, but like doesn't really exist in the way it does. Right. So right now we are taking capitalism at its pragmatic implementation at, at, at how it has been existing in the real world. And then we're comparing it to the utopia that is socialism on paper. Right. So you're saying that go to a toy store and, and look at the summer sales right? Look at all these toys that they couldn't sell. Look at all that shit that was wasted. Imagine how much joy children in whatever country could have had if they would have just had those toys, if they would have been distributed to them instead, right? But this assumes that socialism will tell you exactly how many toys are needed in every part of the world and that a committee will form that will, um, you know, commission the exact number of toys needed to distribute them, right? Whereas on the flip side, we might wind up with none of these toys being produced because some council decides that, well, we don't need this particular thing at all. And now maybe a bunch of kids that would have had access to those toys don't have it at all or maybe the store or company that made that or, or or is selling it wouldn't even exist because a council would decide that it's not needed like i understand no, that I, capitalism I, I has a lot of waste but i don't i don't think that you can just point to the excess and say well socialism would deal with this perfectly you know 
I completely understand what you mean, but I'm not, I am trying to stress like a light mm -hmm. market socialist approach rather than a full on planned economy approach to these sure. problems. And I mean, like, I probably will agree, like, I believe in, um, so like every, so like libertarians, right, are a good example of a group of people that will ignore the existence of externalities. They like don't, for some reason, they don't believe these externalities exist. And yeah, the they're subhuman. Will, will take care of every possible. I, I fully believe that there are market failures and there are negative externalities that will not be ever accounted for in, in the market that the government exists to satisfy you know certain things and i thought to i'm totally on board with with redistributing when necessary or when reallocating resources when necessary i'm fine with that i just like i it scares me to totally get rid of the profit motive because so many good products have been brought to market be on the back of people being really greedy and and really you know success driven that i wouldn't want to ruin that you know and leave it yeah, up to the like, will of a council to deliver the same thing no i get it but think of all the people out there who want to make something cool not out of greed but out of a genuine desire to get their product out there to, to feel worthwhile to feel like they produce something those sure, people but on the flip side, don't get a shot in this society unless they have the starting capital yeah but on the flip side for every one person out there that might have a really good idea there's probably ten thousand that have a fucking horrible idea so like how do you bring all of these things to the light how do you, all of these things see the light of day you know like how do you even decide whose product gets you know, gets a well, shot. Obviously, the free market of a market socialist utopia. <laughs> I, I guess. Seriously, I, though. Uh huh. I mean, what like what puts away bad ideas in practice? I'd say, and and this look, I'm not an economics major, but I'd say about half the time, bad ideas flop because they're bad and they don't make profit when they go out, and people don't like them, and eventually the owner or producer or factory or company or whatever slinks away into people. And the other half of the time, they don't get put out there because the amount of starting capital that it would take to implement that idea, to put it out there to market, is significant enough to make them reconsider the efficacy of their product. Mm -hmm. You know, like 50 percent of it's, it fails once it get out there. 50 percent of it is they look at the twenty thousand dollars they have in their bank account and wonder if it's really worth like making corn chip flavored ice cream R&D and putting it out there to pavilions, you know? Sure. So we have that. That puts out bad ideas. I don't see why those same principles wouldn't be put into action, those same limiting factors in a market socialist society. Because the it's not like you could just wake up one day and go to the council and be like, hey, yeah, I want to – what if uh, we had a, a glass of water but it's open on both ends? You can drink from both sides, you know? You can't just do that. I'm sure there would be like a bureaucratic process. I'm sure there's a whole lot of like alienating bureaucracy you'd have to get through. And then if it goes out there and people don't like it, people can be like, hey, this is a waste of public resources. I'm sorry, but there's someone out there who's got a three-sided glass. You can drink from three sides. Mm -hmm. You know? Maybe, my dude. All right. Well, fuck, man. Okay. I love you, buddy. You got a head? Yeah, I'm going to fucking sleep, dude. Yeah, 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 you sound like you need it. I just, I would just say though that this is a difficult subject, and nobody really has a concrete idea of of what they'd want a socialist society to look like because these things are difficult to implement. But it's really, really important to have faith in the idea because when the time comes and implementation is looming, that's when we can get nitty nitty pity, nitty pick, nitty gritty. That's when we can get picky. Okay. But right now, I think it's important to believe in a better future. Be critical, but be hopeful. Gotcha. Have a good sleep. I love you, buddy. Stay safe.